So once structural preprocessing is done, we can continue with preprocessing of the functional images. So in the bits data structure, we have a folder called func, where all these functional images are located. And you can see most of the time we have multiple runs within each subject where the scanner was uh, turned off and on again and the same uh, procedure repeated. Again, these are in uh, these GZ archives typically. So we want to first extract this. So let's work with um, the first run and then we can click on again, open with 7-zip for example, extract this. And now we have our pure nifty file that SPM can work with. So we can have a look at this. Um, here I would use, for example, uh, Mango to open this because then you can look at the entire scan, which consists of multiple images, of course, right? Now we have an fMRI scan that consists basically of a movie of brain volumes. So you can see when we scrub through this, that there's kind of flickering going on. This is basically your brain activity that is measured using fMRI. And now we can start pre-processing these functional images. So looking at our overview again, we can see that uh, functional pre-processing starts with realignment and unwarping. So for this in SPM, we can click on the top left, realign, and then at the bottom you can see that this, there's the option realign and unwarp. Click on this. Again, we enlarge this a bit. And then under data, we can click on new session. And so a session opens with input images. And here we can now select our bold scan. So we want to again input as the directory our functional folder of this subject. And then we can see that this is the only one that is currently in this folder. And here we have to be a bit careful. By default, it would only select the first image of the bold scan. Uh, so image one here at the end. Uh, but of course, we want the entire uh, scan of uh, bold images. So we, for this, we can use the simple trick to put in inf here for infinite and then it would, will show us all the different um, images of the entire fMRI scan, which is 208 in this case. And then we can select all of them by clicking here on the right and selecting select all. And so now it will select all 208 input images and then we can click done. We have the option to put in a face map here, which is uh, created from a field map scan. Not all fMRI studies acquire field maps uh, and this one didn't, so we will leave this open. Unwarp can also be performed without a field map by basically using the realignment information. The defaults otherwise are fine here. The only thing I like to change again is under the unwarp reslicing options to select seventh degree B spline to allow for maximum interpolation basically. All right, as the next step, we can optionally perform slice timing correction. For this, you can click on SPM and then temporal slice timing. So this is a temporal pre-processing feature. And then again, you want to click on data, new session. And as the session, we can use the dependency. So click, right click, dependency. And then we can choose our unwarped images from session one. Then we need to input certain uh, types of information. So for example, number of slices, the TR of our scan, the TA, slice order, reference slice, and so on. And these pieces of information are typically in an associated JSON file in your bit structure. So typically you will be able to find this when you go to your data set at the first level under data and then search for a JSON file like this, which ends with bold.json. This is the associated uh, JSON file for your bold images. 
and then double click on this and you will see that there's all kinds of information in here uh, for example where uh, this scan was acquired in this case in Cambridge um, and also often you will have slice timing information and this is exactly what we need here this vector of slice times which gives basically the uh, acquisition time of each of your slices so you can simply go ahead and copy this thing and I like to basically uh, put this into a vector so go with slice times and then if we execute this then we have our slice time vector and you can see that this thing is 33 elements long so we can already say number of slices is 33 then the TR is also specified in our JSON file under repetition time so you can also go ahead and, and search for repetition time and you will find this so this is two seconds in this case so we would put in two then TA or the acquisition time uh, it already says here in the help is usually calculated as TR minus TR divided by the number of slices so we can uh, simply do this quite simple um, calculation here by saying uh, 2 minus 2 divided by the number of slices and this is just number of elements of this vector slice times or 33 uh, and then it calculates the TA for us slice order we can uh, specify as ascending or descending or we can just simply put in the exact uh, slice times and this um, we have here in our slice times vector so we can simply copy this thing and put this in here and then for the reference slice this is um, the time of the slice that every other slice is adjusted to and the good rule of thumb is to take the middle slice uh, to minimize the uh, overall shifting so as the TR is two seconds in this case this would be uh, one second and here uh, it wants to have the time in milliseconds so we would put in 1000 and that is slice timing then the next step is co-registration of our functional to the structural images so for this we go to SPM spatial co-register estimate so we just want to estimate the co-registration which will write the co-register information into the header of the functional images instead of creating a new image so we could go to co-register estimate click on this as the reference image we are going to use our skull strip bias corrected t1 image so we go to specify and here we will navigate to the anatomical folder of our subject copy this path paste it here and then we will input uh, the skull stripped bias corrected t1 this is what we want to co-register our functional images to under source image we are going to use the unwarped mean bolt image actually from the realign and unwarp step uh, so we are going to use a dependency again click right on source image dependency and then we select unwarped mean image this is a good idea so we, we end up with the average image basically of the uh, realign and unwarp uh, step and then under other images we want to apply uh, the co-registration to all of our uh, functional images so for this we uh, right click on other images dependency and then select the output from the last step from our slice timing step if you left out slice timing you would uh, select here the uh, unwarped images from the realign and unwarp step the uh, defaults otherwise are okay and then we're already done with 
co-registration. Next is normalization. So here we want to apply the normalization that we estimated for our structural images to our functional images. And so here we go to SPM, spatial, normalize, normalize, right? Again, because we want to simply apply the normalization that we already estimated. So our deformation field from the anatomical images. So for this, we click on uh, data, new subject here. And as the deformation field, we select uh, the deformation field from the anatomical images. So we again navigate to our anatomical folder of the subject. And here this Y underscore image is the deformation field. So this is something you just have to know. Y underscore uh, is, is the deformation field. So we go with this thing, Y. It's already pre-selected, so SPM is kind of smart here telling us, okay, we want a Y underscore NII image. And then as images to write, we select again the output from the last step, so our co-registered uh, functional images. So for this, we uh, right-click, click on dependency, and then co-register estimate co-registered images. Under the writing options, we first can crank up the interpolation again to 7th degree B-spline. And what I also like to do here is set the voxel sizes to the original voxel sizes of the functional images. So if you don't know what your voxel sizes are, there are multiple ways to find this out. For example, you can use Mango and open uh, your functional images and then you can click here on File, Image, Info, or simply pre press uh, Control i And then it will show you, okay, the voxel dimensions here are 3 by 3 by 3.75. And this is also what we want to use now for our normalization step. So we go to voxel sizes, and then we put in 3, 3, 3.75. That's normalization. The final step is then to apply smoothing. And for this, we go to SPM, Spatial, Smooth. Under Images to Smooth, we will again use our dependency, click on Dependency, and then we will use our normalized functional images as the input. Then as FWHM, this is the size of your smoothing kernel. And uh, there's a lot of debate on which kind of size to use in the literature. But a good rule of thumb is to use two times the voxel size. So in this case, we would use 6 times 6 times uh, 7.5. So we click on smooth FWHM and put in 6, 6, 7.5. Everything else can stay the same and we're done. So we can simply click on run batch, so the green arrow again, and then it will perform functional pre-processing for us. So these are the motion parameters that we get from realignment. And then we get an estimation of the EPI deformation fields from the unwarp step. And if we navigate through this, you can see that in the uh, orbitofrontal part of the brain and also in very uh, ventral temporal aspects, there's the most uh, deformation which is uh, expected. Now slice timing is performed. Next is co-registration. Here we see the output from co-registration, so you can see how well the structural images on the left are aligned with the functional images on the right. Then normalization is applied. And finally smoothing. Okay, and now our entire pre-processing is done. So we can also save this batch for the functional pre-processing 
by selecting file save batch and script and then we call this batch preprocessing functional again it will create the script file and also the functional underscore job file for us this is the actual batch that we're interested in and so again for the next subject we could load this thing again and uh, simply change a few subject specific files so if i'm going to close this go to batch i could click on open batch go to batch preprocessing functional job done then under images we would of course have to select the images of the subject two for example slice timing can stay the same as will, will probably be the same across all subjects for co-register we also would have to use the skull stripped image of uh, the next subject as well as the deformation field in a normalize step but other than that everything uh, is coded using dependencies so we can simply uh, use the same settings okay as a quality check you would also want to at least check the registration between your normalized functional image and a standard space image. So for example, I could navigate to this uh, functional folder of this subject. Now we have again, tons of different files. And you can see that here at the bottom we have, uh, for example, the uh, normalized slice timing corrected unwarped and realigned image so this wau image this we could for example compare to a standard space image so we would click on check reg go to wau sub and then go to previous spm12 canonical single subject t1 for example this is our single subject t1 normalized image in mni space and you can see if you go to the edge here, are uh, we also roughly in the same space um, in the other image here? We can see that uh, we end up in, in black, but this also is due to a signal dropout at the bottom of the brain, probably at higher spots in the brain. Um, the fit is better. So we can see if we're in the sulcus here for example are we also in the sulcus here and this seems to be roughly fine okay and we can also check out the um, smoothed image but uh, you will see that this is much harder to see actually where we are in the brain so the s w a u image smoothed warped uh, a for slice timing corrected for some reason and u uh, unwarp so this is the actual image we would use for later analysis, uh, this smoothed and normalized image. And then again, we can select our single subject T1. And here you can see this is now actually the image we will perform our analysis with. And we can check whether the registration is approximately fine in this case as well and that seems to be okay so now we're done with pre-processing at least for one run of one subject and so we would later of course want to generalize this using scripts that use for loops and so on to run this across all runs uh, of all subjects all right thanks very much and see you next time